This is so whatever. Whatever, dude. Whatever do you mean? Oh my goodness, we're back in the studio. Oh goodness gracious. Another installment. We made it through yet another week. Right, this is episode 12, right? Yeah, I'm really excited about it. We got some great guests in. Great. And uh, I tell you what, though, I, I got to bring up something that I saw over the weekend. Matter of fact, you saw it too. Uh, we were at the Rams game. Right. And now we know I'm a big, <clears throat> let me just get this out right now. I'm a big fan of the Make-A-Wish family. And I'm sure Donnie is too. By the way, Donnie is here. Yes, Donnie's here. Donnie's oh, here. I can't concentrate. I'm sitting next to Mary Elizabeth. Oh, well, we call you. Donnie, you always jump every the gun. Every time. Every time. Every time. I mean, every time. I mean this guy. Uh, loads his load right out, right, out, right, out, right out the gate. Every time. Not even two minutes. Hey, what was the time on that? Usually he's two minutes. I think this was like a minute 20. Oh, Mary. Yeah, minute, minute 20. 20 he's blows, already blows. Blows. Oh, Sorry, already. sorry, Mary. Well, uh, I'll have That's to right. take care of you. Again. Okay, back. To anyway, anyway we're big fans of the Make a Wish Foundation. Big fans of the Make a Wish Foundation. Yes, we are. Poor kids. Now, usually they pick something legitimate. Yeah. They would go to Disneyland. Disney World. Meet, maybe yeah. meet the president. The kid the other day got to go work out at training camp with RG3 of the Redskins quarterback. That's cool. Anything yeah. is pretty much available, right? Yeah. For these kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean, That's it's cool. like just name your name your That's ticket. That's good stuff, guys. Yeah. This kid the other day, we're at the Rams game. They bring a kid on the field, and he's seriously ill. And his wish was to go to a Rams game. Wow. Oh, that's not uh, a wish. That's just a ticket and going down there. Well, that's kind of what we wow. were saying. Oh, my God. Uh, we, we were dumbfounded. Me and Nathan looked immediately uh, at each other. We were like, for real? So this yeah, is what you come up with? The kid had to make a wish. He could have had anything. Oh, oh my God. And he wants to go to a Rams game. So if you want to know how the brothers sure. feel about it. Uh-oh. This is how we feel. We'll edit it together. <laughs> Where'd it go? It's not there for some reason. Oh, that's nice. Did you guys have well, it well, the, the joke is that Donnie's been there four well, times um, to make a wish. <laughs> right. Oh, well, I, I paused the recording. They, they keep denying it. Oh. They, they, okay. It's always a trip to Vegas, no holds barred. Right. That's what that's it is. For Donnie. That's for Donnie. Okay. okay. Yeah, they keep Do denying. we have the sound bite? No, it's not there. I, I don't know why, What's but the sound it's bite? not locating it. Well, it's anyway, a we, we'll it's Cosmo Kramer. We'll saying. insert it later. Yeah, really? Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it that's what that was. We can insert it later if you want. ITunes, but that's fine. So, anyway. We can insert it real quick. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Let's insert that. Score. For some reason. Very scores. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Mary's wardrobe tonight is sponsored on by Brothers Whatever, except the skirt's too long. <laughs> okay. Uh oh, here we go. I know what happened. They imported it without actually importing the file. Oh, that's good. They they made a shortcut. One. I think it was ghosts. I think, I think it's possessed. It's possessed. Do you see anything um, in that over there, No. Was... I didn't even bring my rods, and I should have brought my rods, but I didn't even bring my rods. Like kale rods? No, they're, they're dowsing rods. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. He blew it just like Donnie blew it. Oh, oh man. Donnie. man. Donnie. Maybe he, after he gets his big wish of going to an actual Rams game, he went over and got a couple uh, cheeseburgers and went No, 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 no. That was it. No, that was the wish, wish was over, over, bud. Wish was over. You it's don't get over. anything else. Cheeseburger. You can't, you can't. You got Donnie, it. Donnie, now you told me a few weeks ago you wish you had $10,000 so you yeah. could immediately start. Yes, yeah, yeah. pissing and shit. Can, can, now, 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 I don't like how you said that. It's oh, more well. magical than oh, that. No, okay. and I want Mary to help me and Dr. Lynch here, the magical uh, divining Dr. Lynch who 
Who the, knows uh, all? Dr. Lynch and Studio. Yeah, Doc, Dr. Lynch and Studio. I gave that away. Like Mary, 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 Mary Elizabeth and Studio. Thank you, Don, for that introduction. You guys, <laughs> you guys, I'm so excited to be here with Dr. Lynch That's for so right. many reasons, but one, because he's my hero. Oh. oh. He's Donnie's hero. Donnie's I'm sure hero. he's Kayla's hero by now. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm lovable and huggable. Can we get real, over it? Uh, he's this a guy cock blocks me. Just the mere mention of him cock blocks me. He's a real life Ghostbuster, people. He's been all over the country, correct? Yeah, that's true. And on some of our top cable television shows, oh, syndicated yeah. shows Ever since doing since 2000. This. I'm cutting the deal now for Discovery, so oh. you may see me on Huge. Discovery on Shout a Shout out to program. St. Louis. Uh, what are you going to be doing on that. Discovery? I'll be saying, there it is. Humping good <laughs> yeah. That's yes. awesome. Dude. I say, as long as the, the, the limousine pulls up and I get a per diem, I said, I really don't care. I'll, I'll say whatever I'll you want. I'll hunt the ghosts, bitches. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Give him the triple Z. <laughs> what were you going to do with your dollars? Yeah. What were you do well, with before I do that, if I, if I was choking, I would only be Heimlich by Dr. Lynch. Oh, wow. That's really Man. weird. That's, 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 that's weirder thing. than a lot of things you say. <laughs> no, you really? Know, it's Dr. Lynch behind you. It's <laughs> <laughs> a weird thing. Bye. He's my Heimlich. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Lynch, here's my thoughts. Wow. Can I say? Be my guest. I think that you're secretly super. Yes, true. So I, 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 you look no, like I, him. You actually, sound like him. I think I'm the Batman. uniform is is hidden somewhere. No. <laughs> and that's why you're everybody's hero. No, and no. sometimes they're like, I know he's a hero, but I don't know how. I know how because you're really Superman. Uh, oh, I try. I it try. is true, listeners. I swear you. You cannot, you cannot win you with look, Dr. Lynch around. I mean, like, when he tells his stories, right his voice, his looks, the women. That's why he's right. my boyfriend. The women fall out. Wow. Right. Wow. 18 to 80, blind, crippled, and crazy, yeah. and Dr. Lynch will take him. <laughs> look, 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 oh, look, my God. Look, 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 I don't know. I look, so, I look so, uh, <laughs> so wonderful with these headsets on. Let me just say something, because we went to Contamination. Defcon uh, 4. Yeah, yeah. Defcon 4, Dave Dyer production. Dave Dyer production. Another one coming up, too. Stay tuned. No, not not this coming year. Horror, sci-fi, pop yeah. culture convention. Now, me and, me and Nate went there with the full knowledge that we would probably be the studs there. <laughs> because we didn't... <laughs> and well, ever well, address that? Be, Don't hold back. Hey, we figured we, we you know, we were going to be a bunch of, amongst a bunch of nerds. Well, and that's true. And, thing. true. and then all of a sudden we walk in, we're, we're, we're dodging <laughs> doggone Dr. Lynch's <laughs> cock <laughs> like the <gasps> Matrix. I mean... We're oh. doing the Matrix on it as soon as we walk in. We're like, doggone it. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh we have a, we have a Lynch, why don't you tell us about it's yourself? It's a special moment. Um, I'm male. <laughs> <laughs> what, what and is I'm your, on Facebook. What is your degree in? Uh, I have uh, several degrees. I have an associate's degree in software engineering, or, or, or uh, right. IT. I have a bachelor's in art, and I have a master's in occult studies. Mm. And I have a doctorate in, a PhD in uh, parapsychology. So, wow. so all of it kind of, you know, didn't really go anywhere. I could build a website and tell you about the occult real quick. You you get, your degrees went from boring to super interesting. No yeah. kidding. Yeah. You like get upset from major not, nerd to like. Woo, <laughs> do you get upset if you're not introduced as Doctor Michael? Lynch? No, some no, doctors, some guys do. I don't. Uh, I do a, a couple of other radio shows. And when I come on, they just say, hey, here's Michael Lynch. And we all know him from Paravision or Discovery or, or uh, you know, Fear or whatever. You know, they kind of do my portfolio. They don't really talk about my Ph.D. Because a lot of guys in the room don't have a degree. You know, they went to announcer school or the Bob right. Barker, hey, how to be in front of the TV. The, who's that guy? Uh, American Idol. Who's that guy? Oh, oh he's in front Ryan of TV. Secret. Oh, I hate him. Oh, God. oh, talk about one guy who has no talent. That guy's all the way to the bank, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, for Good one. anyway, so so he has no talent, but he makes a lot of money, right. and so no one walks around saying, "Hey, Brian Seacrest, PhD, you know, blah blah blah. What's right. going on?" So, um, so a lot of times I don't I don't do that. I just I just kind of feel out what's going on. But I get these guys. A couple are over in St. Charles, and there's a couple over in Alton, or you know, wherever I go, and then they slap that PhD out there. Well, then I just slap mine out too, and then they say, "Where did you get yours?" or, or oh, "What do you know?" Blah like blah a blah. Contest. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, well, I happen to have the ghost busting equipment of the century. Click, laid on the table. Yes. Oh, there I go. Oh. What do you got? Can you cast a spell? You know, it's oh, like, it's like, what God. do you got? And they got nothing. Wow. They got nothing. Well, I got a K2 meter. I got a. <laughs> EVP recorder, I've got my mom's uh, 
cell phone uh, number on, you know, quick dial. They don't dial, know you're Superman. And, <laughs> and then go, suddenly you're, you're well, that, I go, I just go, well, that's, that's really nice, but that doesn't you know, equate that you have a PhD. It equates right. that you may know something about the paranormal. Right. But uh, like Jason and Grant, when uh, the first year Jason and Grant saw me, we were right, right over here in Alton, Illinois, doing the Unitarian Church, the basement of the Unitarian Church. I know church. that church. Yeah, and I caught the ghost in the basement of the Unitarian Church. There's three ghosts down there. Donnie was in the basement of that church when he was little several times, right, Donnie? Making star pentagrams and burning the goats. Well, ah. yeah, there was no pentagrams making, but there was somebody down there with him. But, uh, older. but anyway, so we videotaped. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. Good so stuff. we videotaped the ghosts in the bottom of the Unitarian Church. And here's the funny part about it. Okay, Troy Taylor, who lived in Alton, Illinois, I think he's in Decatur now, but he wrote the Haunted Alton books, right. several, uh, and he boasted up and down, the interior church is haunted, and I wrote a whole chapter about it, and blah, blah, blah. Well, Troy, come on, go with us, ghost hunting. Hell no, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go down there because there's ghosts in there. Oh, you know? I don't blame he's, you know? he's only proven his point and by being afraid of it. Yeah, him. and so me and my team go over there. We're with World's Scariest Places, and they get three places in Alton, McPike Mansion, Unitarian yes. Church, and uh, what other place? Mineral Springs Mall? Uh, Mineral Springs, they yeah. said. And then we were also supposed to do the schedule to do the coffee shop across, down the street and across from the Mineral Springs, and I can yeah. take it there. Uh, for some reason, that didn't turn out. I don't know why, but the guy's camera equipment kept shutting down. Well, that's his little <coughs> story. But anyway, so we do those three areas, and Troy Taylor is the consultant on the project. He never leaves his bookstore. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's me and my team, my team and I, we walk in there and then we are videotaping the ghosts. Well, this airs, this is the first episode of the second season of, of Scariest Places on Earth. And there's two nerds, plumbers, sitting at home called Jason and Grant. And they go, look at that. Those guys are able to videotape ghosts in the basement of the Unitarian Church. That's what we didn't need to do. We need to do that. So let's call ourselves something and go out and look for ghosts. And that's how Jason and Grant got started. Wow. Yeah. So, so now, three years later, I, there was, a, there was a, a big ghost conference in Pennsylvania. And I, that year I did not get a chance to go. And I kicked myself because that was the year that Jason and Grant was discovered and the kids from Paranormal State were discovered. I'm very angry. And the kids from Paranormal State threw on the conference for Jason and Grant, who got discovered because there were some local boys chasing down ghosts. Well, I didn't go that year, okay? Mm. Well, the next year I show up, and, mm -hmm. and I walk, I'm walking down the hall, and Jason and Grant walk out, you know, because they're like saying, oh, you guys are just, you know, they're like right. rock stars. Shut and they turn right around, and they look at me, and they go, oh, my. Sh and he's like, oh, shit. And he's like, and we're like shaking. Good. You got enough to drink? You want, you want a again, sandwich? A big yeah, big yeah. Big here's a, here's yeah. a sandwich, man. So you and really he goes, kind of threw him under the bus. Oh, if you yeah. To, and, right? I, and they said, they said uh, you know, we yeah. are like, you know, worship, you know, you are like the best. You're like, you know, you're like the state of the art, you know, worship everything. And, uh, and I was like, well, great, we're going to get me on your show. And they go, no, we're not going to do that. And I find out later, the reason that Jason Grant don't have anyone else on that's really in the top five mm -hmm. researchers is because they don't look... They're intimidated. Dumb, dumber right. than anybody else. And they've actually not put people on their show because it makes them look so incompetent. Yeah. But here's the big thing about the two rock stars of the paranormal, is that while they're off doing an episode, they hop on a plane, fly and give a speak someplace, like for five grand, so they're making two grand a pop, to give a lecture at some college. They fly back to the investigation, they wake up out of their hotel like, oh, gee, well, that was late night last night because they had been gone for two days. Oh, right. And they go, what are the evidence? After you guys went through 14 hours of evidence, we just actually made an extra two grand mm -hmm. plus the, the, the whole show. Now, these guys have done this for long enough that they paid uh, in cash $1 million for the Spalding Hotel, which then they had their own team investigate to declare it haunted. So now you can go see Jason and Grant in their hotel in Vermont, and uh, it's haunted, so now you can have your own ghost hunts in their hotel. Okay, is it haunted, or are you saying they show a lot of grand to basically say it's haunted? Yeah! And build an empire yeah, sure. for themselves. Now, is this, yeah. most, That's is so this shady. most shows we're seeing, is it bogus? Bogus, 99.9% bogus. Are you bogus. saying Alton's bogus? Now, I know a guy no. that said Alton's bogus, that is not no. haunted. What no. are you saying? I can, prove, yeah. I can prove, within a shadow of doubt, within 22 seconds, 
that, wow. that the McPike mansion is that's, haunted. Wow. That's Period. almost quicker than Donnie. <laughs> I know. Yeah, oh. speaking well, of that, I jumped on. I want to know more about Mary because I've been sitting next to her this whole time. Mary, uh, so I understand you you have a blog and you're a publicist. <laughs> of course you understand that. You're my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to. I know. I'm sorry. I like, <laughs> It's hard and for me to separate the buddy. friend with the co-host of the show. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we're buddies, and we're so. colleagues. We do a lot of work projects Yes, and together. she was at the same convention. All of us piled around at, at the, the DEF CON yeah. 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 contamination. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Where you and I had a drink together, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And they of course did. you did. Nice. Uh, well, what other one did you have a drink with? <laughs> oh, man. There, was, there uh, were man. several. And Dr. Lynch, that I would have liked, too. Oh, Dave, Dave Dyer came out and said, I want to introduce you to the sexiest woman on the planet. And I turned around and... I said, man, she's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, you know, I was gonna, you know, no, I already had, I already had uh, drinks with the most sexiest women on the planet. You know, here's Mary. Oh, she's right here. Oh, she's right oh, here. Oh, for, the, oh, for those yeah. few that my heart's going fitter, fatter. See, they will see her. I've already done it. You know, um, but yeah, Mary's a publicist. She hangs out with Donnie, who's uh, in always in need of an intern or a special uh, publicist, publicist somewhere. Yeah, and. Um, but yeah, that's that's the other thing. It's like uh, everything's written on Donnie. I can find like four, four or twenty Google hits on Donnie just by typing in Donnie's Donnie's World. Oh yeah, I found out about it. I've got really a great on mine. So yeah, speaking of the blog, I've got a great video blog. Do you remember Donnie? Just on Donnie calling. It's called Refrigerator Rights. We we recorded that a couple years ago. It was ago, a spontaneous actually. moment. I and just, he had a, you, I was, you know Donnie has flashes of brilliance, yeah, right? Yeah. And and you can't yeah, set you're enthralled because Wait a minute. It's I, so I'm it's offended cold. by flashes of brilliance. What are you saying? The main Donnie is is is, is retarded? <laughs> no, that's not what I said. <laughs> well, we don't use the word not. I'm sorry, sorry about that. Less, less really disabled. Right, less anyway, brilliant. Less brilliant. So so the blog is called St. Louis Who's Who dot com. Uh huh. I can't believe I got that name. The, real, so name, cool, isn't the yeah. real name of the actual blog is St. Louis Who's Who so You've Never Heard Of. Cool. Because I, I like think that. that people pay a little money here and there. They're rubbing shoulders with all these Who's Who in St. In St. Louis who believe they are. And they're all in cahoots together. And right. you don't really get the truth. Right. right. You don't really oh get God, like, news with integrity. So, like, for wow, instance, you guys. Wow, she's got a conspiracy going, too. I just did a, uh, a blog for you that's not live yet because... Right. You guys, this is to shine light on people, places, and things that people don't know about but should know about. Nice. So many times I meet people like you or like you or like Donnie that I think, man, they got a story and I want to share it, but I know the news is not going to pay attention to me. Right. So I just decided nice. I'm going to do something myself, and that's what it is. I like it. It's a, I've wow, got them all so far. Fresh. It's yeah. good stuff. If you yeah. were to, uh, it's fun. If There's you, a great one coming out on... Brothers on whatever. Yes, yeah. hey. <laughs> we got people from nine countries following this blog, That's which so way. blows my mind because I had they can read. didn't expect yeah. that, wasn't trying for it. I was like, who the hell in Japan <laughs> oh, <laughs> cares, wow. about, yeah. cares about what I'm writing? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of overseas, oh. Dr. Wench. Yes. Mm. Can you give us anything on what's going on in Syria? I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it it's sucks. Elvis it, behind it. it uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, uh oh. oh. Old phone. We'll get back to that in a second. All right. The code word today is, or for this week's show, is Casper. A friendly ghost, but we'll just take Casper. All right. So you were saying about Syria. Oh yeah. The the problem with that we have with Syria is that uh, Syria has allegiances with. I have two things I want to tell you about Syria. I. I want to tell you the first thing first, and then I t so don't try to don't interrupt me too much. I'll lose my train of thought. Mm -hmm. First thing about Syria is Syria has alliances with Russia, with Iran, w some with Turkey, and some with Jordan. Okay, but Syria is in a civil war. They have not crossed any international borders and does not require uh, America, NATO, or the UN to get involved. The same thing happened in, in uh, Chechnya, the same thing happened in Africa with the Hutus and the Tutsis. There was a civil war wow. inside and we did not intervene. Even though we had good justification to do so because of hundreds of thousands of people being killed. Um, we uh, do not need to intervene because of their alliances. If we go into Syria, it may provoke Russia to do more than what they're doing now. And it may provoke Iran to loan Syria 
uh, not only weapons of gas, uh, you know, they'll give them napalm or they can give them nuclear. And then wow. so, so, so if America wants to drop its own nuclear bombs on Texas or on Louisiana or on some other inside of the nation, we have the right to do so. Okay. So, so. But, wow, bomb Texas. It's, it was mentioned first on Brothers on Whatever. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was mentioned a long time ago. We just haven't got around to it yet. So um, the, the whole idea is that uh, if Bashar wants to uh, detonate nuclear weapons, a uh, napalm, a uh, gas, uh, he can do it within his own country as long as it doesn't bleed into anyone else because they're having a civil war. Okay. Um, that's that's what's happening, and then the, uh, America does not have the right to intervene. Right. Uh, we don't have the right to even question their uh, capability of what they're doing because it's under their uh, laws. Mm -hmm. It's like saying um, the sheriff is saying, "Okay, uh, Assad, you know, is saying these are terrorists, and we're going to round up the terrorists and kill them." because they're against the government, just like America would have done, or will do, against the terrorists, against it. Okay, so as long as we don't cross the borders here, everybody's just, you know, it's like wait and see. But, at the meantime, two or three, up to four million refugees have crossed the borders into Jordan, into Israel, into Turkey, into uh, Iraq, and demanding a place to stay. So what, so what ends up to being uh, a small civil war in those countries. Now the population is fleeing that country, like you know, rats fleeing a ship, and they're going to all the other countries and then demanding food and water and a place to stay, which puts a drain. Jordan has been through this already with Iraq. Millions of Iraqi refugees, as we were invading, ran to Jordan. And Jordan has been like the Switzerland of the Middle East. It's always a safe haven. Well, the problem is Jordan wow. is going to the UN and demanding billions of dollars for federal aid or UN aid to keep his nation afloat. Normally it's very wealthy. And the whole idea is that now they're just shelling out money to keep these people alive. And it's getting more and more difficult uh, okay, so for Jordan. And I'm the Prince of Jordan and I agree on a lot of things, politics in that area. Okay, speaking about shelling out money, now you told me a story before. Can you give us about, I mean, three minutes okay. might be hard. Okay, but yeah. But I'll, this is, I'll get to the second chapter on this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> After this. Wow. Okay. Um, you told me, and I probably got this wrong because I get everything wrong, sure. that I'm Osama sure bin Laden loaned President Bush the, the money, money. Mm -hmm. to buy the Texas Rangers. Yeah, the bin Laden family did. Tell us, tell me that story again. Oh that, that, that was something okay. else. There are, there are three brothers involved. There are, okay, okay. Uh, Where is this information coming from? The CIA. And this is Dr. coming Lynn. straight out of the sure. CIA. Okay. Oh, Harry, and stop questioning Dr. Lynn. <laughs> well, why did the CIA share a story like that? What's their interest? <laughs> they Someone... want somebody else. They're after, they're, they're after somebody else. Okay. Is why. That, they, wouldn't, they don't give up something else. This exactly. This is yeah. Lynchy leaks. Yeah. Oh, got my God. Oh, oh, oh. All right, go ahead. Okay, let's, let's like look at the doctor. Okay, let's, okay. The doctor has the floor. The yeah. uh, Daddy Papa Bush retires from being the president. And as soon as he retires from being the president, he becomes a lobbyist to the Saudi Arabians. Well, the, what the, the family, there's only one family in Saudi Arabia that handles all building contracts. You can't build a building, build a road, lay concrete without going to the Bin Laden family. It's one of the wealthiest families in Saudi Arabia. There are 14 families of nobility and then the rest of them, like 97, have one thing to do. Their families do that one thing. So if you have trash pickup, one family is going to pick up wow. all, all the trash in Saudi Arabia. Okay, if you are another country, like let's say another country like uh, Syria or America Emirate Emirates, guess who you're going to contract uh, to do all your trash pickup or all your building or all your road construction or if you're in Dubai, guess what families in Dubai are going to, they're going to hire to do all of their construction. They're going to go to Saudi Arabia, they're going to go to a family, and they're going to say, lay us brand new roads, build us brand new hotels. <clears throat> here's the contractors, here's the materials, you supply the labor, it goes all into you. So over 30 years, or 40 years, since Saudi Arabia became a state, it was broken down into families. Former president, first President Bush, retires as being president, realizes he can make a lot more money, 
going to Saudi Arabia and not only cutting oil deals through OPEC, he can cut deals that will put his sons into positions of power. Mm -hmm. So the Bin Laden family, again, if you're going to fleece somebody, you fleece the wealthiest guy because he can't, you know. So what happens? The Bin Laden family goes, hey, President Bush, you need some money. Your son's uh, wasted all of yours, and now, uh, <laughs> now he, wants to, wow. he wants to become something with his life. <laughs> hey, we got our own son, Osama, and he's up there, and he needs some CIA money to fight the Russians. Well, the CIA comes in, trains Osama, trains all of his people. He sets up bases to train soldiers to fight the Russians. Money from the CIA and training from the CIA went to Osama, and he dealt it out as fast as he could get it. Plus, used his own money for uniforms, weapons, canteens, food, supplies, everything to fight the Russians. America trained him, out of, you know, just like they would train anybody out of the School of Americas, and that's Manuel Noriega, Muammar Gaddafi, um, uh, several other people we've overthrown. But the deal is, is that we would set them up, and then we would knock them down. Okay. So Osama bin Laden needs some help because he's living up there and uh, in Afghanistan and he's fighting the Russians. Well, we shell out tons of money in federal aid to the Afghans, to Osama, to help him train a civilian force, the Mohor Jadeen, which they were to declare holy war on the Russians with our supplies. We bring in the anti-helicopter guns, the air-air missiles, uh, stinger missiles, whatever we can on horseback, and they are trucked by horse. We send them the freaking horses. We sell it to them. Bin Ladens are paying us on both sides. So they're paying us to pay the CIA to deliver the stuff, and then they are shipping it back into Afghanistan on horseback. Mm -hmm. Everything's great. Well, then old man Bush says, hey, um, my, my, my son needs a loan. He needs, he needs to straighten his name out and uh, you know, uh, stop living off my back, so let's start him up in business. And Bin Laden's go, well, that's so okay. great. We'll, we'll start him out. How much money do you want? And they says, well, we need to buy a, a sports club. And then after he buys a sports club, he's going to run for governor, and he'll pay you all back. And they go, okay, no problem. You know, we like to invest into a sports team. Well, they did, okay. And Bush bought the sports team, the Texas Rangers. He, he built it up as a semi-celebrity of the president's son. And then he was never put on the board because he was such a bad financial manager. And then they said, okay, well, you use your popularity as the president's son to bolster it, and then we'll sell it out to somebody else, to some other loser. And that's exactly what they did. Well, then he ran, well, in the last year he was owning the Texas Rangers, he ran for governor of the state of Texas. And then when, he, as governor of the state of Texas, after four years, suddenly he be de de declared presidential material. Suddenly. So... He had a, so he sold the Texas Rangers out, and they said that that's what paid for his presidential run, which was wrong. The buyout of the Texas Rangers took place over like over 10 years, so it was going to be dropped in over 10 years. Well, the, um, the Bin Laden said, so they went back to the Bin Laden and said, listen, if my son becomes president, you can have whatever you want. We'll pay you back, have whatever you want, no problem. And the Bin Ladens go, well, we're not sure about this, so, uh, but you treated Osama pretty fairly. You treated Osama pretty fairly. So uh, we'll give you some more money. Your son can run for president. We need to get... Oh, okay. Well, this take a couple more seconds. This, this. Anyway, oh, he's on the line? Yeah. Okay, well, that's right. Well, we can get back to this, but the deal is, is that one of the Bin Laden children died on the Crawford Ranch in an airplane crash going to a barbecue for George W. Bush. This is while he's still governor and preparing to run for the White House. The white, his run for the White House was with Bin Laden money. That's why when 9-11 came down and he says, we're going to go after bin Laden, it was a total ruse. And this is going to get back to Syria right now. This Wesley Clark, former presidential candidate, says that there are six nations they want to invade. We've already invaded three, and Syria is the next one on the list. But wow. we're going to get it because the oil companies want it. Wow. wow. Well, speaking, wow. speaking of presidential wow. here candidates. Here we go. We just had a... This is so whatever. Whatever, dude. Whatever do you mean?